Hi, Jason Knott, Chief Content Officer for CE Pro and Commercial Integrator, and I am here with David Smith, COO of Lencore. Hi, David. Hey, Jason. How are you? I'm great. Thanks for joining me today. So for many residential integrators who may not know Lencore, tell us a little bit about the company. Sure. So Lencore is a manufacturer of sound masking, paging, and background audio uh, equipment. And what we really do is want to raise sort of the ambient background sound within an, uh, an office environment, typically, um, in order to really reduce, um, you know, distractions within the space, uh, provide speech privacy, so that uh, those within that space can really kind of get their heads down work done and not be distracted by conversations that are going on around them. Give us a little bit of a sense of how sound masking works. Is what is generating the the, the audible noise? What are the decibel levels? What's uh, how is it measured? How is it created? What do integrators need to know about when they're de delivering a sound masking system? Yeah, great question. So. Essentially, when you and I are speaking, just in our sort of our normal voice, we speak at about 65 decibels. When you get to about 7 or 12 feet away from that conversation, that drops to about 46 decibels. And so many people have this misconception that sound masking creates kind of, kind of a cone of silence, if you will, um, when in fact we're actually introducing noise into the space. And so what we do is we raise that ambient background noise level at about 47, 48 decibels, just above that indirect speech level, in order to mask or cover uh, those conversations. And so if you think about it, you know, we like to take people from the library where the tap of a pen or the whisper of a conversation can be very distracting from, from what you're doing. Doing, and we put you in the coffee shop where you know there's hustle and bustle and activity going on around you, but for some reason it's not distracting and you can get your heads down work done. That's essentially what we're trying to accomplish with sound masking, which is reduce that distraction, minimize the amount of um, understanding of a speech or a conversation that somebody can understand. Because if you can understand less than 20% of a conversation, you're not distracted by it. And that's just proven research that's out there. So that's the type of environment that we're really trying to create when, when we introduce sound masking to a space. I love the cone of silence reference because I was a big Get Smart fan. <laughs> yes, I, I remember one of the great trivia answers, who invented the cone of silence? Professor Cone. <laughs> so. So uh, let's talk about a little bit about uh, what happens in that, that sound masking environment pre-pandemic and now I'll say post-pandemic. Uh, so pre-pandemic, a lot of uh, corporate offices were being put into socialized environments with huddle rooms, gathering spaces, those sorts of things. What kind of a role at the pre-pandemic level did sound masking uh, play? And then now, post-pandemic, where we have people coming back into offices, and in many cases, they're, they're emptier offices, how much of, more of an important role is sound masking playing before and after? Well, that's a mouthful, but uh, we'll, we'll see if we can get through all of it. Um, as it relates specifically to pre-pandemic, uh, sound masking was traditionally thought of as creating speech privacy within a space. And as I discussed before, as you elevate the ambient background levels, you create speech privacy for the conversations, but you also then minimize um, sort of that distraction within the space. Um, what we've seen from a design standpoint within facilities is that you're correct. People were moving towards you know more collaborative environments, uh, really trying to more open spaces. Uh, they were removing sort of the uh, the partitions within cubicles and going to a benching or a desking type of environment. As part of that design element, we also saw the elimination of a lot of those absorptive materials such as acoustical ceilings or carpet or even fabric panels um, all seem to disappear and were really replaced with things like wood and glass and metals, which really kind of created sort of this fun, dynamic you know, work environment. It was a, a neat space to look at, but you were no longer controlling acoustics. And so sound masking became really part of the ABCs of, of sound, A being absorbed, B being block, and C being cover. Cover really became your only last way to sort of manage acoustics within a space. And so people were introducing uh, sound masking as a solution because they wanted to keep the design within that space, um, but they also needed to control the acoustics. And so therefore, sound masking became a real good solution for that. 
now post-pandemic, um, what I will say is uh, people are going to be returning to spaces that were, say, designed for 100 people uh, within that facility, and you're only going to get 40 or 50 or 60 percent, you know, capacity returning to an, the office on a on a steady basis as we still are trying to understand sort of this hybrid model that exists out there. So you still want to maintain speech privacy, and that's still the overall um, uh, original goal of what sound masking is going to do. But because you're going to be less than full capacity in those environments, um, it's going to feel eerily quiet. And sound masking is just the introduction of noise within that space. And so you can actually create more comfort within that environment because it will feel busier by having more noise within that, that uh, particular facility. So we really see it as an opportunity to create some wellness within that environment, um, which employees are gonna care about as they return to the office. It's gonna be you know, top of mind. Um, and we're gonna create a more comfortable space for them uh, with the introduction of sound masking within, within that facility. Give me a brief synopsis of the installation element of it. Is it, it, you know, integrators are so used to putting in distributed audio systems for many years on the residential side. Now they're moving into the corporate environment, a sound masking. Is it, is it a unit that goes in the ceilings? Does it have to have a proximity to speakers? Give me a sense of what the installation is like and then the controllability of it. So we really do see the transition of a lot of residential um, integrators moving into, you know, not necessarily large corporate spaces, but certainly into commercial uh, opportunities. And so uh, as we see this transition, understanding sound masking and how it works, um, I think becomes, you know, helpful to their business as they add this on as a, a, an additional tool on their tool belt. And so the way sound masking works is really you can think about it in three sort of major components. You have your head end equipment, which is sort of the brains of, of the overall system. Um, we use what's called um, operating platforms and our competitors may use other language than that. But essentially the operating platform is just code for amplifiers and DSPs and neurons that, that tell the speakers what to do. Um, and then just that, your speakers. And so by combining those three um, together, we're able to effectively cover and mask um, speech within the, uh, the facility. So from a design standpoint, we make it very easy by sending us a reflected ceiling plan. Uh, we do all the design layout. Uh, we do wiring diagrams. We provide bill of materials um, and then effectively demonstrate how and where those products would then be installed. Uh, and so it's a very simple uh, addition to um, you know, what I would imagine you know, integrators are already doing from a distributed audio standpoint. Fantastic. What about training? How does an integrator learn? Is there a certification process? Do you have uh, Lencore specific training that you can help these guys kind of understand how to do this? So with the uh, pandemic, we have certainly learned uh, to to you know, adapt uh, from a training aspect. And so we have, we continue to conduct uh, live, you know, via uh, Zoom, um, you know, training sessions. We, we do offer a certified installer program. Uh, you can go to our website and find when those, uh, those trainings are happening. Uh, and we are also adding the addition of, uh, you know, on-demand training for our systems. And so it's very easy to uh, effectively get a hold of, of Lencore um, and, and learn about, you know, our systems and how easy they are to install uh, and if you're not happy with essentially the, the the options that we're providing reach out to us we'll be happy to schedule some one-on-one -on -one time if that's what it takes or you know talk to uh, you know your group of installers in order to effectively uh, help you understand um, and make make sure you're comfortable uh, installing the system so one of the things that we have seen one of the trends we've seen that happened during the pandemic was this this increase in home office and so many workers going to work from home offices. What solutions can you offer on the home office side? That's a great question. And Lencore has innovated ourselves uh, as well as we, ex we as we expect this hybrid model to really not just you know be a, a flash in the pan, so to speak, but you know as as employees have returned home and have demonstrated that they can work from home, uh, we think that this hybrid model is going to is going to be here to stay at least for uh, for a while. And so as part of that, uh, Lencore has introduced essentially a 
at home, um, you know, decorative desktop unit for the, that home office space. And really the idea behind it is to create a like element, um, you know, where they, where they feel like we're, they're getting sort of the same overall, you know, expectation at home that they do in the office space. And so we want to create, you know, um, a comfortable environment for them to work at, uh, create that speech privacy because we know there's other distractions that occur at the home uh, office, um, but we still want them to be as, as productive and as comfortable as possible. And so we're launching uh, essentially a, a new product for the, that space. So when can we expect to see that product? And do you have a, a name for it? Is it still in the works? The name's still in the works, but you can certainly expect it early second quarter. Fantastic. A lot of great information, especially as more integrators move into this resimercial space from the, the residential side traditionally into this crossover opportunity. Uh, great information. David Smith, thanks for joining CE Pro and Commercial Integrator today. Mm -hmm.